there guys and welcome to episode 17 and would you look at that glorious stadium i hope you guys enjoyed that intro it was something a little bit different and i've had that in my head for so so long I had commissioned Sven Berlin to make the All Black assets a long, long time ago and he did such a great job on those. We'll go into those a little bit later on. And also Ellie Targs has just finished working on Sky Stadium from Wellington in New Zealand and look at it. It is just so, so sexy. I can't really think of any other word to describe it. It is just so beautiful. He's got the scale bang on. The textures are well class and he's got all the little supporter signs and everything and this really helps create a really realistic look to this downtown area now and I'm just so pleased with this. So I hope you guys are doing really really well and let's jump into this episode. So what you see me doing here is I delete a small part of the coast that was existing with a playground and extend the walkway that we have with the rocks in front of it all the way up to pretty much the stadium. But I'm moving the ferry depot right over by the stadium as well because I want people to use the ferry to get to the stadium. I think that's pretty cool. I haven't got any car parks around the stadium because the bloody ugly to be honest um, and I'd rather people in real life use ferries but in the game as well ferries and also I'm doing something later on with transport that you'll see as well it makes perfect sense really I've already got an existing ferry line in the city and I'm planning on building it around much more of the coastline in future so this will just be one of various stops this area here in between the walkway along the coast and the road I just put some playgrounds in here and these new playgrounds were released and I'm pretty sure they're from Titan on the workshop um, they may be Rec 4000 it's one of those really elite guys anyway and look how cool this looks this is a really neat area I've left it quite simple and it does the trick so the first thing I really want to do is complete the area immediately surrounding the new stadium and this includes here I want to put a ticket gate by the ferry entrance. There'll be another entrance on the other side that we'll get into later but this entrance is also going to include a service road that goes around into a rear loading area as well and I've tried to make a purpose to this i.e. the loading area but I've really just included this because it looks quite interesting and makes the area around here just yeah look a little bit different one of my main rules with building this realistic city is to try and keep variety as high on the priority list as possible and including these areas that I think might not fit really just mean I'm including extreme variety if that makes any sense at all I guess it kind of just means that if I don't choose stuff that's outside of what I would normally choose then this city is bordering on what I want to build rather than something that may be realistic.
so the area surrounding the real life Sky Stadium in Wellington has this really cool platform that runs from the train station up to the main stadium and anybody from New Zealand that's been to that stadium will know how easy this makes it to get in and out of the stadium and on and off the train and I've just loved this idea from the moment I seen it the moment I went to the stadium and seen how easy it was you can walk from downtown from where the stadium is I just had to include this in the city so the first thing I do is use these concrete networks just to map out where I want it to run and this is a little bit larger or longer than the original one in Wellington but I did contemplate putting another train station in on the foreshore but it's so close to the central station that I didn't think that would be that realistic this walkway only needs to be about another 100 150 meters longer than the original one in real life and it's pretty close to those dimensions so I thought it made more sense to extend this one so once I'd got that basic shape with the networks, I used the network surfaces, the double sided ones that are not invisible from underneath for the surface and then I can go through and I use the NAR pillars as pillars that look like they're holding up the walkway because they've got really cool textures and I think they look appropriate. And I round a few of the corners on it as well because it gives the overall shape a softer look and I think it would just be more realistic if people were walking around this bit here it would be curved and it looks really neat from the air which is probably more to the point. Oh, and while I'm thinking of it I have to give a big welcome and thank you to all of the new subscribers from $2.20's live stream the other day he gave me a big big shout out he's a big fan of the series and he watches it so hello if you're watching buddy and thank you so much for the shout out and yeah welcome to all the new subscribers I hope you guys are enjoying it if you are new to the series and you are enjoying it then please by all means drop a comment I'd love to hear from you So guys, the All Blacks figures that you've seen at the start doing the haka, which is a traditional Māori war dance, they are now on the workshop. I'm not really sure what anybody else might need them for, but they were so perfect for the opening scene for this episode. And I touched on it earlier very briefly, but Sven Berlin, the asset creator, the amazing asset creator, had made the All Blacks for me, and it was quite the process just getting him the information because he obviously had no idea what the haka was. So after a fair bit of back and forth with the information, Sven has actually gone to a 3D modelling studio in Germany and danced the hucker in front of a green screen, which we both had a good chuckle at. And I think it's quite amazing that, um, you know, this game can, can cause grown men to do this, this sort of carry on, me asking him to do it and him going and dancing. Um, I think that's pretty mind blowing to be honest. And again, what an amazing job he has done with them. The dance is pretty well bang on. Um, the modeling of the All Blacks is world class. Um, he took time to change up the characters and make, make different ones with tattoos and, you know, moldy men and, and Pakiha men together. So he, what a fantastic job. Thank you so much Sven and if you guys are after All Blacks in your city for whatever reason um, yeah, they're in the workshop so go and at least give them a, a rating because no one's given them a rating yet and they've been in there for a few months so yeah go, go and give them a thumbs up. So I should probably explain for those who don't know but the haka is a traditional Māori war dance and it's done to respect the opposition and also respect the battleground and pretty much to bless the battle that's about to take place so it's a very respectful dance it has um, got a lot of tradition here in New Zealand and it can make growing men cry seeing the haka that's how much it means to the average New Zealander so um, I had to include that in the city somehow and I thought that opening scene was really really cool the first time I edited and put it together it really gave me some some feelings you know when the All Blacks are playing on a Saturday night it's it's quite a buzz here in New Zealand and I got a little bit of that from that opening scene which is great so getting back to what I'm building on camera here now that I've built this elevated pedestrian walkway that heads over to the stadium from the main train station I can start filling in the blank areas around it now 
and I decided to do this before I detailed and finalised the walkway with props and the last little finishing touches because this city is grown in scale so much now that if I don't complete areas as I make them available to be completed then they get left behind or it gets a little bit overwhelming how much needs to be done so I'm doing these little blank areas first so that things are being completed 100% as I move along otherwise I leave myself too much to go back and do later on and most of the time it just never gets done. So most of these buildings you see me placing in here are just low commercial. This area here is still very much in the heart of downtown although coming up towards the water's edge by the stadium I would like the height of the buildings to sort of fall away as it gets towards the sea. I like the city to apex perfectly in around where I've got the sky tower which we'll touch on a bit soon and because I left a lot of empty space in the middle of the city after our Christchurch earthquake episode I've got a large part of the middle of downtown yet to build and I'll look to do this in the next couple of episodes now that I've got the stadium in place and I know where my limits are with the building but I plan on going into the sky tower and its construction in the city here a little bit more in that episode the rest of what you see me put down here in the way of buildings is basically just that low commercial there's a little bit of office space that I put in around here and I detail it pretty heavily I really want the downtown to look like it's alive and have heaps going on down here so I also plan on giving the entire downtown area more detail when I revisit it and finish off the last of those buildings
now I can come back and start putting down the finer touches on the pedestrian causeway that goes over to the stadium and I start with the ticket booths here these are probably the most important thing to include you also see me put in a little elevator that comes up from a small commercial area and I put some fences around that doorway as well so that they have to come back and through the ticket gates if they come up from that entrance as well and after I finish off the ticket booths with the fences for the queues the rest of the things I put up on the walkway are just planters with some trees some bins and some seats I put a small amount of advertising up here as well some stains on the ground to make it look like it's weathered and aged and that's pretty much it for the area and it looks really really good I'm pleased with it I think it looks really realistic too which is great and the last thing I do to finish off the walkway is put some pedestrian paths up here and if you guys are wondering how you can do this and make them invisible you use a normal vanilla pedestrian path elevated place it where you want it get the height just right and then use the invisible paths mod and then just basically upgrade them to invisible paths once you've got them in place this has been a little bit of a go-to of mine to get areas animated with people moving and I've done this for as long as I've played the game or as long as those mods have been available and as far as I was concerned what a complete waste this entire causeway would have been if I couldn't animate it with real people so they're not going into the stadium I've just connected it through the stadium and down onto the roadside through some prop doors and this gets plenty of people using the walkway I want to thank you guys for tuning in and watching again I hopefully you've seen more than just one episode but if this is your first episode thank you very much for watching I really appreciate it guys also if you guys could give some love to Sven Berlin and Ali Targs that would be much appreciated because you can see what these guys do their work it's incredible and yeah a little bit of support from you guys would be fantastic well I hope you guys really enjoy your weekend and have a great time do something nice for someone and yeah I will see you guys on the next episode of City Skylines New Zealand peace out